Hey, 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 AP World History Scholars! I'm Ms. Ziegler, the Time Machine Teacher, and we're back today with your Imperialism DBQ. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure and do that and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss a thing. Also, if you haven't watched the six document videos, those will be very helpful for your understanding of this DBQ today, so make sure and go back and watch those real quick, and then you can come back and watch this longer video. In terms of the DBQ, DBQs are very subjective. So what I'm going to go over today is not the only answer. There are tons and tons of answers that you could do to this DBQ. This is just a very simple way to kind of understand the DBQ a little bit more, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. First off, you need to put your documents into groups. Our prompt was what are the positive and negative effects of imperialism? So we have two different things that we were looking for, right? Positive and negative. Now I always tell my students that it's good to have three total paragraphs about your topics just in case one is wrong you have an extra. The minimum requirement is usually one change, one continuity, one cause, one effect, and so on. But have an extra. Why not? You should have time to write that. So we're going to look today for three effects total. You can do two positive, one negative, or two negative, one positive. That part doesn't really matter. You just have to make sure and have one of each. So the first thing you're going to do is draw three buckets on a piece of paper. Just three blank squares like you see up here. These are going to be your boxes where you're going to group your documents. Alright, so hop over to where you have your document notes. And I'm going to hop onto my iPad and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's my three boxes or my three groups. And if I look back over the documents, I can see that I have document one, and that one is positive because of infrastructure. And I have document two, which is negative, and the justification. So I'm gonna put justification up there so that I remember. And document three is also about depriving a freedom and it's negative. So I'm going to put that over here and put freedom beside it. And document four is more justification and harsh treatment as well as document six. And document five talks about the freedoms that were taken away. So there I have my buckets. Now it's super easy to write my thesis because I need all three of these to be in the thesis. Okay, so here's what you would write for your thesis, or a possible thesis. The positive effect of imperialism was the building of infrastructure. However, the negative effects were harsh treatment and depriving natives of freedom, period. Okay, now that you've got your thesis, it's time to write your contextualization. Now, this is something that everyone seems to struggle with, but it's really simple. It's just the first part of the story. What was causing imperialism? That's what you're looking for in your context. It's kind of like at the beginning of a movie where they tell you 10 years ago, blah, 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 blah. That's the same thing. Okay, so you're just looking at what is the reason why imperialism happened. Well, go back to industrialization. Industrialization happens and all of a sudden Europe needs raw materials. So where are they going to get all these raw materials? Where are they going to get accessibility to new markets to sell their products? Where are they going to be able to invest and build new railroads? Hmm. Imperialism, ah, that's what we'll do. We'll go and colonize and imperialize other places. Colonialism and imperialism are used interchangeably by historians. So they basically mean the same thing. In your context, you can write imperialism since that's the topic of our DBQ, and you can say it's caused by industrialization. Okay, now, you have literally your three topic sentences right here. Number one would be about infrastructure, number two would be the negative effects of harsh treatment, and number three would be the depriving natives of freedom. So just break those down for each one of these paragraphs. So your first topic sentence would be the positive effect of imperialism was the building of infrastructure. Then if you go up to document one, or document one in your packet, let me get to it. So to describe this document, you would simply say this, or document number one is written by Lord Lugard, and he is explaining that the Europeans mutually benefited Africa as well as benefiting from them. 
So going into the supporting part of your DBQ for this document, you would say document one explains that the Europeans built railways and roads, drained and took back swamp areas for cultiv cultivation. That shows that you know what this word means. Reclamation just means like draining those swamps and putting them back into cultivation and irrigating deserts. Now, once again, we're showing that they were helping through building infrastructure. So you can say all of these things helped Africans by improving their living standards and easing the minds of Europeans who thought that it was a mutual benefit for each instead of Europe just going in and taking all the resources. So once again, this is kind of a justification, right? He's making it sound really good. And then he says, we added to the prosperity and wealth of these lands. All right, that also shows this infrastructure. So I would reword that and say, he claims that Europe added to the wealth of the lands and to help them improve. Okay, now we can do our explain part and do point of view. You can say the point of view of this document is that he believes that Europeans mutually benefited Africans through being there. Now, the why part is really important. Why does he believe this? He believes this because he is European, and as a European, he believes that they are more civilized than the Africans, and so they are bringing civilized administration to Africa, as well as all of this infrastructure. Then you can go into audience and you can say the audience of this document is other Europeans. And that is important. Why? Because he is talking about all of the positives and he's definitely putting a positive spin on this for his audience. If he were talking to Africans, he probably wouldn't be using the same type of language, right? He goes in to say that all of these things were helped. They ended the slave trade. They ended human sacrifice and witchcraft. So you could put that in audience and say that he's showing the Europeans all the good things that were ended in Africa. There's your first paragraph. Basically five to eight sentences and you've got that document done. Now we need to move on to our second paragraph. And if you go back down to your boxes. Okay, so for our next paragraph, we're using two, four, and six and we're trying to prove that the harsh treatment was justified and this was a negative effect, okay? I would start with document six because this shows the harsh treatment and then you can use the other two documents to show the justification of it. So to describe this document, you could say document six is from a man who was in the Congo during imperialism and he describes the harsh treatment of natives at the hand of other Belgium officials using the Chakoti or a whip, okay? That shows that you know Chakoti. Now, if you're using it to support the harsh treatment, you could say, according to document six, the torturer would make those he was punishing take off, of, take off their clothes, and he would strike them several times as they were crying out with horrible cries and groans, and that... He was so evil that even when the sufferer got up, he still had to give the military salute. Something like that would support what you're talking about with this harsh treatment. Now you can go into the point of view and, or the audience, and you could say this document is written from the point of view of Stanislas Lefranc, who is a devout Catholic. He clearly does not agree with this type of treatment. And it probably has to do with the fact that he's a devout Catholic and his religion is telling him that this is not the right treatment of human beings. The audience of this document would be other Belgian people that he is writing to let them know what is going on in the Congo and how horrible it is because he doesn't spare any details. He just says exactly what he's seeing. He even says that he's witnessed this, okay? So those could be some things that you could write there. So then you're going to go up to document two to prove justification. 
To describe this document, you would say document two is The White Man's Burden, which is a poem written by Rubyard Kipling, and it is explaining why the Europeans were doing what they were doing to the Africans. Then you're going to support justification, so you would say, according to document two, it was the white man's burden or the calling of the white man to go and civilize the Africans who were half devil and half child. Basically, Europeans looked at Africans as not even human. That shows that you understand this part right here. They justified this so much that they were calling their sons to go, the best of their breed, people who were highest on the totem pole, basically, to go and do this, and it was their calling, it was their burden, it was something that they had to do. You could do purpose for this one. I think purpose is probably the best one and the easiest. You could say the purpose of this document was to go and colonize and civilize these people. And he's using such strong language to get people, to get the Europeans to agree with him and to go and send their sons to do this. The point of view is very similar to the other documents that we talked about where it's social Darwinism, racial superiority. So you might not want to write the same one again if you've already used those words with document one. However, if you've not, then you could write that one again. You could also say that the audience are the British, and that's why he's speaking in this way about the Africans, because he's not going to talk about them being not human if he is talking to Africans. Then if we go down to document four, we've already got our descriptions done. However, it's always a good idea to put in a couple extras just in case you miss it or you misinterpret a document. So to describe document four, you could say document four is a speech from the prime minister of France discussing the duty of the higher races of Europeans to go and civilize the lower races. Now, once again, we're uh, trying to prove justification. So you could say, according to document four, Jules Ferry discusses that Europeans have a superior civilizing duty to go and help the, uh, these other less fortunate lower races. And they should do it in generosity and kindness instead of the way that the Spanish did it when they took slavery to Central America. And then you could also say that according to document four, the French needed safe harbors, defenses, and supply centers on the high sea because they had such a strong navy. That would be pulling plenty from the document to support it. You could do point of view, which is also very similar because of racial superiority. So since we've already done that, I would do audience and say the audience were other French government officials. And he's trying to play to the fact that they need to do this by bringing up Napoleon, who is a hero in France and who would, who French people would look to as a hero and say, oh yes, Napoleon went and, and built his empire. We should do the same thing. Okay. Now on to our next paragraph. If you go down to our notes, it's the negative effect of taking away freedom. We're using document three and document five. So you could start with either one since I'm closest. I'm going to start with, um, I think I'll start with document three actually. So let's go with document three. After you write your topic sentence, the negative effect of imperialism was taking away freedoms from Africans. You could describe document three by saying this is a resolution put out by the All African People's Conference to condemn colonialism and imperialism based on specific premises of taking away freedom. There's a good description. Now we have to support it. So you could say, according to document three, economic exploitation by imperialist countries hindered Africans and made them go into poverty because it took away their human rights, such as freedom of speech, freedom of association, freedom of movement, freedom of worship. 
And you could say that the exploitation caused all of the freedoms to be taken away. You could say this document is claiming that because of this exploitation, Africans were denied all of these freedoms and the lack of an abundant life, something like that. Then you could go down to document five and you would say document five backs this claim up by saying that Africans would have been able to industrialize had they been given the opportunity instead of having their rights taken away. And you could say, according to document five, the worst part of colonialism, I'm going to reword this part right here, the worst part of colonialism was taking away the ability to manage their own economy and civilization and thus making them lack the confidence in being able to do that. So you could say that taking away these freedoms and not allowing Africans to govern themselves was a negative effect on society. Then, if you want to do point of view, he's a nationalist. Well, nationalists believe in self-governing their own country. So you could say this is written from the point of view of an African nationalist who believes that each specific country should govern themselves. And therefore, he is being very strong in his advocation for the fact that it is possible had it not been for colonialism. So now you have hit all the major points. You have described it. You've supported enough with the documents. And you've gotten your explain point by doing enough point of views and audience. The only other thing that we haven't done yet is outside evidence. So I'm going to hop back over to the video and we'll talk about that. Okay, we're back to talk about the last two points of the DBQ rubric. The first one is outside evidence. And that is just talking about anything else that wasn't mentioned in the documents. You also need to make sure that you don't use the same information that you used for context or it won't count. Okay, so for example, you could talk about the Berlin Conference. You could talk about it in relation to the scramble for Africa and how all the European countries were trying to get their hands on it. You could also bring in China and India and discuss the Opium Wars or the Sepoy Rebellion. Any of that outside information that has to do with imperialism would work. Make sure you have about three to four sentences just to be safe. It can't just be, oh, and the Sepoy Rebellion happened. That's not going to do anything. And then the last point. This one is probably the hardest point on the essay to get. It is called the complex understanding point. And you have several options here. I would say that one of the easiest ones is to explain a relevant or insightful connection within or across the periods. So, for example, you could talk about how this connects with the silver trade or slavery in America. And you could explain that imperialism, even though it wasn't called slavery, still treated the natives very much like slaves. You could give specific examples from the Congo and from other places where they used Africans as porters. We read some excerpts of King Leopold's Ghost. If you have not read that book, it's just eye-opening at how the natives were treated. It's just, it's, it's crazy. So you could pull some of that in that we talked about from King Leopold's Ghost about how they were used as porters and many of them didn't survive. You could compare it with the mines that the Spanish controlled in South America and you could talk about the dangerous work in the mines and how many of the natives did not survive and how that compares to imperialism. Even though it's not called slavery, it's pretty much the same thing. And that would get you that point if you do it well. Make sure that you do about four or five sentences about that as well. You can sprinkle it in your essay, but it's easier to do describe, support, explain, in my opinion, and then just put the other stuff at the bottom. That way the reader doesn't miss it. Outside evidence might flow better as you're writing to put inside of your document, but if you want to put it at the end, that's fine too. Okay, well I hope this was super helpful for you. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing.